Hello. Ernie and I have been talking about how important the first couple of lines in a book is because it makes the difference between you wanting to find out what's happening or not reading it at all. So I've got some books here. I wonder if you can guess what the name of the book is. Yeah, Ernie's ready. Here's the first one. Once upon a time, there was a little girl who lived with her mother on the edge of a big, dark forest. Can you guess which one it was? Yeah, Ernie guessed what it was. It was Little Red Riding Hood. And I think that big, dark forest gave you a little bit of a clue that something exciting was going to happen, didn't it? Right, let's have another look. Right, this one would be for an older reader. I disappeared on the night before my 12th birthday, July 28, 1988. Gosh, I wonder if you've read that book. Well, I would certainly want to find out why the person who wrote the book disappeared. And the book is Kenzuki's Kingdom by Michael Mulpergo. And I tell you what, that's well worth a read because it's just as exciting as it sounds. One more. This one might be a little bit old for Ernie. In a hole in the ground, there lived the Hobbit. It's a nasty, dirty, wet hole filled with the ends of worms and an oozy smell. Nor yet a dry, bare, sandy hole with nothing in it to sit down on or to eat. It was a hobbit hole, and that means comfort. Well, it was given away in the first few lines, wasn't it? What the book was, and the book is The Hobbit. And that is really exciting. As you know, there's a great adventure that goes on in there. Perhaps it's one that I could read to Ernie. What do you think? Yeah. What's that? Now, I'm reading the beginnings of those because actually the story I'm going to tell you from the Bible today is all about somebody who was preparing the way for something really exciting to happen. So he was like the first few lines in a book. But before that, I'm just going to light my candles. Now, I don't know if you saw Rosemary making that wonderful advent ring that she made last week, and it had the advent candles on it that we have in church. And she lit the first candle, and the first candle was for, can you remember? It was for hope. Now, this is lit. You probably can't see that it is, but it is. And I need to light another one today. Now, I wonder if you can remember what Rosemary said it was going to be. Well, it's going to be peace. Might want to run out of battery, so yeah. yeah. So this one I'm going to put on. I've got two more small ones and one in the middle. Now, the one I lit today, not only does it stand for peace, but it also stands for the prophets. And the prophets foretold what was going to happen. Now, in the Old Testament, there's a really important prophet called Isaiah, and today's reading starts with what Isaiah prophesied. And this is what it says. It comes from Mark 1, and we're going to look at verses 1 to 8. Here begins the good news about Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God. In the book of the prophet Isaiah, God said, Look, I am sending my messenger before you, 
and he will prepare your way. He is a voice shouting in the wilderness. Prepare a pathway for the Lord's coming. Make a straight road for him. And this messenger was John the Baptist. So today we're going to have a little look and find out about John the Baptist. Now, interestingly, the next candle that will be lit next week, which stands for love, also stands for John the Baptist. So he obviously was a really important person. Now, I've got a children's Bible here and it's got some really useful information about John the Baptist. So I'm going to read a little bit out of there. So Ernie's ready. Are you ready to listen to this? Elizabeth and Zachariah's son, John, grew up to be a holy man. He went to live on his own in the countryside of Judea so he could think about God and to pray without being distracted. He wore only a simple robe woven from camel hair and he survived by eating locusts and wild honey. When he was about 30 years old, he began preaching to anyone he came across. Be sorry for your sins and turn away from evil was his message. So you can enter God's kingdom, which is nearly here. John was such a powerful speaker that people traveled especially to see him. People from all walks of life flocked from towns and villages and the city of Jerusalem too from poor common people to powerful Jewish groups like the Pharisees and the Sadducees, as well as farmers, shopkeepers, tax collectors, and even Roman soldiers. They usually found John on the banks of the River Jordan. What does God want from us, they would ask, and John would advise, be kind and generous, treat each other fairly. Don't hurt anyone, neither in your actions nor your words. Now, John's teachings were so stirring that people often asked him if he was the saviour, the Messiah spoken of in ancient writings. No, John would insist, but I am trying to prepare the way for his coming. So, there we are. He had a difficult job, didn't he, John? Because he was trying to tell people that Jesus was in the world and was coming to them to tell them all about God's love, the person who had been waited for for so long. But he also didn't want people to think that actually it was him. But he was like those few lines at the beginning of the story, wasn't he? Because he was such a powerful speaker that everybody wanted to find out more about Jesus. Now, oh, oh right. Well, Ernie said, why was he called John the Baptist? Well, we'll have a little look at that in a minute. You see my special cloth there? I thought I could tell you why using that. I'll just go and get it set up. See you in a minute. Right, can you guess where we are? We're both standing in the River Jordan. But we're all right. It's um, actually quite dry here, really. But this material does look a bit like a river, doesn't it? So it's a good thing to use today. So, why was John called John the Baptist? Well, after he'd finished telling the people how they should live their lives, the people wanted to say sorry for all the bad things that they'd done in the past and to show that they really did want to follow God's rules in the future. So John, showed them that they could make this commitment by doing a sort of a symbolic thing, by washing away all the bad things that they'd done in the past and having a clean slate so that they could start anew and start to be kind and generous to each other. So John would stand in the River Jordan and then the people would come in and then John would baptise them. Oh. 
Ernie said, is it going to hurt? Well, no, it didn't hurt anybody. And even when there was real water, then um, John would have looked after the people in there, I'm sure. And it just would have been a case of them dipping all of their body into the water and coming back up again. And I expect actually afterwards, they felt pretty wonderful because it was a brand new start for them. So it might have been a bit like this. Then he's all right. Yeah, he said it, it didn't hurt at all. And when they'd been baptised, then John would give them God's blessing and then they would go away and begin to think about what they could do to be better people. So that's why he was called John the Baptist. Now, one thing that does come at the end of those, those chapters that we haven't spoken about is that John, when he was asked if he was the Messiah, he said no, because he said, I'm not even fit to touch the sandals of the man who is Messiah. And he said also, when the Messiah comes, that's Jesus, he will baptise you, not with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. So then people really wanted to meet Jesus and to find out more because they knew that this was a really exciting journey that they were on with John. So next week we've got something that's going to happen that's really exciting because it's going to be our messy church and we're going to go on a really exciting journey that day we're going to have part of the Christmas story and we're going to have some things for you to do in between all the pieces so it's a journey through Christmas so I hope that you're going to join us then it's going to be really fun and we'll see you again next week hopefully so bye